Okay, I'm going to take a few minutes and, and, and take a look at um, what I cover and what I call Unit 2, um, which is no net force. Now, basically what I'm talking about is let's consider a body in which there is no unbalanced force acting on. That's the issue, no net force. We want to think about describing its motion. Every time you see the word motion, think velocity. We want to think about does it have energy? And we want to think about does it have momentum? These, these are some of the general overarching topics that we're going to take a look at during this unit. Now, the big ideas are basically the answers to those questions. Um, in terms of forces, with no net force, what that means is the body's motion is not changing. In terms of energy, when a body is, has no unbalanced force on it, it may have kinetic energy, but because there's no change in motion, the kinetic energy is not changing. Likewise, with momentum, it may have momentum, but since there is no change in motion, the momentum level cannot change. And, and, and this is, these are the big ideas that you should get at the end of this unit. Okay, let's talk about forces first. When we talk about no net force or no unbalanced force, that means F net is zero. Another term for that is equilibrium. Well, since acceleration is net force over mass, and if net force is zero, acceleration must be zero. The motion, the velocity is not changing. This relationship between acceleration and velocity is critical to understand. A lot of kids have trouble with it, and, and, it's, and, and it's clear that they have trouble with it. So when acceleration is zero, we have constant velocity. When we are dealing with constant velocity, velocity is change in position over time. The only time we use this, this expression is constant velocity. If velocity is not constant, we cannot determine the velocity based on change in position over time. We have to use one of the kinematic equations. A lot of kids want to use this expression all the time. You've got to be very careful with that. So, if we have constant velocity, that means one of two things. The object is at rest, velocity is always zero, or it has a constant speed and constant direction. It's moving in a straight line. Um, a lot of times when we talk about an object's in equilibrium in class, I, I ask the kids to describe the motion and they want to say constant velocity. But sometimes I want, and that's correct, but sometimes I want more information. Is it at rest or is it, con or is it moving at a constant speed and direction depending upon what the problem scenario is telling us. So keep in mind, saying velocity is constant when an object's in equilibrium is okay. I think it's better to specify whether it's at rest or it's moving at a constant speed and direction. I always introduce position versus time graphs at this point, and I think the best way to show this is on the board. So give me a second and let me get to the smart board. As you can tell, I'm now at the smart board and want to talk a little bit about position versus time graphs. Um, I'm not going to introduce every type of graph this way, but since this is the first graph that I'm talking about, I thought that I would. Now, a position versus time graph, another way of saying it is position as a function of time or the relationship between position and time. If you see these phrases, either one of these is talking about a position versus time graph. That's really important to be able to recognize those terms. So here's what it looks like. We have position, which is measured out in meters along our vertical, and we have time, and I don't know why I put seconds, I'm just stupid. We have time, which is in seconds, along the horizontal. Now, typically, a lot of times, instead of writing out position, we will put x or y. Our x position, which is the same thing as horizontal, or the y position, which is the same thing as vertical. It doesn't matter 
what we're talking about, whether it's horizontal or vertical, the same rules apply. Okay. Just introduce the expression or constant velocity expression, which looks like change in x over delta t. Remember, when we write change, it's final position minus initial, our final time minus initial time. Well, for this, I'm just going to say my initial time is 0. And so I'm just going to write this as final x minus initial divided by um, Let's rewrite this. Time times velocity is final position minus initial position. And I'm going to rewrite it one more time and say final position is equal to, and I'm going to say velocity times time. That's it's the same thing, plus initial position. Now, in the AP world, we really don't use the subscript I for initial position. It's referred to as naught. So x naught is our initial position. Uh, we don't use a little subscript f. We just say x. And basically, that refers to our current position, or position after t seconds. All right. So let me rewrite the equation using these terms. We have x is bt plus x naught. Now, this equation should look familiar. And if you think about an equation similar to this that is not in physics, that might be in math class, you might think about y is equal to mx plus b. And that's, quite honestly, what I want you to think. With this expression, people are pretty familiar with that. What that saying is, we have y, we have x, we've got some type of a graph. The slope of the graph is m, and the intercept is b. Same thing. It doesn't matter. We can be talking position, and we can be talking time, in which case the slope is velocity, and the intercept is our initial position. And so it's really important to recognize that these terms go together. They're analogous. We're going to come back to this expression, y is equal to mx plus b. A lot of times we'll only see it as y is equal to mx, but that's okay. But we use that a lot in this course. So let's take a look at position versus time graphs. We've got a graph. Time is on the horizontal. I'm going to say x position is on the vertical. Let's just say this is my graph, and I'm going to have it go right to zero because I just want to. If we think about the slope, everybody knows how to calculate slope. Rise over run. Rise is the change in our y-axis, in this case, change in x. Run is the change in the horizontal, which is change in t. That equation should look familiar. That equation should look like our constant velocity expression. And when we do that, what we recognize is that the slope is the velocity. And since slope is constant, it's not a changing slope. Velocity is constant. These relationships sound, I don't know if they sound mind-blowing or sound, well, basic. Yeah, obviously, duh. But these relationships are so critical to understand. Because you're going to get these graphs 
And if you understand how to look at the graph, it makes it so much easier. We know that the slope of this line change in x over change in time is velocity. How fast it's going. Think of it also this way. When we calculate slope, we also want to calculate the value with the units. So if we look at the slope units, we have a change in x, which has units of meters. We have change in time, which has units of seconds. So the units of our slope value is meters per second. Velocity. Another key, you know, to help you recognize what does the slope mean. And ultimately, when we talk about more graphs, you've got to recognize what the slope means. It's going to be valuable information. So, if you're given an expression such as here is the position of the object as a function of its time. What you know is this is the initial position. It starts at one meter. This is its velocity for meters per second. Keep in mind that another way to write this equation is to write it as x as a function of t. Sometimes we see it that way. So x as a function of t. Position as a function of time. You see, we come full circle here. We talked about the words. We put the words into a graph. We got an equation. We put the equation into words, which takes us back to the graph. So these, I, this idea of position versus time, and that the slope of a position versus time graph is velocity. Recognize how we got that velocity. Change in x over change in time. This is not, you cannot memorize every possible slope situation that we're going to run into. You need to be able to look at it and just simply recognize the quantity that the slope refers to, because it's not always going to be clear. As we talk more about graphs, we'll get into that a little bit more later. But as far as position versus time graphs, this is a real good introduction. All right. So let's look at the energy aspect of no net force. See, this is that's all there was with the force aspect. That's that little bit of information. With the energy aspect, Remember, if the body is moving, it has kinetic energy, which is energy of motion. The way you calculate kinetic energy is one half mv squared. You might already be familiar with that. Keep in mind that kinetic energy is a scalar. It is not a vector, which has some important ramifications to it um, as we go through the, the course. When we're looking at a moving body with no net force. I want to ask the question, why does it, why does a moving body have kinetic energy? Where did this kinetic energy come from? You probably know from conservation of energy, it's just not created. It's got to come from someplace. Where it comes from, we're going to talk about later. That's for another topic or another unit. But we will come back, to, but be thinking about this idea. Also think about that the body could have potential energy, specifically its gravitational potential energy. Not gonna, I don't really worry about that right now. I focus that in later units, so we're going to look at that in later units. All right, let's look at the momentum aspect when no net force is acting upon it. If the body is moving, it has momentum. Momentum is a hard term to define. I think Newton simply defined it as a quantity of motion, a number associated with the fact that it's moving. Kind of like kinetic energy, but different. Here's our calculation for momentum. Momentum is mass times velocity. Here's the thing to understand. Velocity is a vector. So therefore, momentum is a vector. And it has the same direction as velocity. When we get into the momentum calculations later on, conservation of momentum, that, that velocity 
um, direction is really critical. Again, let's ask the same questions. If a moving body has momentum, why? Where did it come from? These ideas will ex be explored later on. Momentum is like energy is also conserved, so it just doesn't magically appear. It's got to come from someplace. And we'll talk about this in later units. Th this is it for, for, for this unit. And, and it takes me about two days, maybe three to cover in class. If we have no depth force, no unbalanced force acting upon an object, that means there is no change in velocity, no change in motion. The body is either at rest or it's moving at a constant speed in a straight line, Newton's first law. So this sounds simple and it really kind of is simple, but it has a lot of implications associated with constant velocity. So whenever you see the term constant velocity, constant speed, it means no net force is under is acting upon it. Doesn't mean there's no forces, it means there's no unbalanced force. Pretty critical idea to understand. So that's all I've got. That's simply all I cover in unit two. Unit three does get into a little bit more of complicated ideas and it's much lengthier. But for now, that's where we are. Hope this was a, some help. Good luck.